Hello, today I'm going to be looking at fatigue and recovery in sport. Fatigue can come in many different forms. For example, there are four different types of fatigue, which are sprint fatigue, isometric fatigue, systemic fatigue and central nervous fatigue. Sprint fatigue occurs after intense, ex intense anaerobic exercise, causing an increase in acidity due to H plus ions and lactic acid which is why you may feel your legs burn after intense exercise. Isometric fatigue occurs after static exercise at about 75% intensity and blood supply is cut, which causes soreness in muscles. For example, if you have done a ski sit, isometric fatigue may occur. Systemic fatigue causes fluid loss, and if there is a 2-3% fluid loss, it can have a dramatic effect on the person. This is due to a rise or a fall in the temperature. Now we're going to look at fatigue at max intensity. The test that could be used for this is a 100 meter sprint, which would be which would use the ATP slash PC system, and the main fuel source would be glycogen. There are not many waste products from this, only potentially lactic acid. As fossil creatine is stored in muscles, it is able to resynthesize ATP very quickly, but can also run low very quickly at max intensity probably last for about 10 seconds. This is because there are small amounts stored in the muscles, therefore after about 10 seconds performance may decline as there is no longer a quick source of energy. However, you can take creatine supplements to increase PC stores and therefore fatigue can be reduced or avoided. Recovering from this is known as alactic recovery, which is a quick process and will take five minutes or less. Oxygen is required for recovery as the body could not get enough before that before and there is a large oxygen deficit. Also the epoch size is fairly small as the recovery is quick. Fatigue at moderate intensity exercise like an 800 meter sprint would use the ATP PC system for the first 10 seconds then the lactic acid system for up to two minutes. The fuel used would be glycogen, and waste products would be lactic acid and H plus ions. The respiratory exchange rate is likely to be high as it is anaerobic exercise, so, so oxygen is not used, but, it, but CO2 is produced, so it could be higher than 1. Also, skeletal muscle glycogen and liver glycogen is all used up, which can cause a build-up of lactic acid. Build-up of lactic acid is due to anaerobic glycolysis, which increases acidity acidity as lactate is used as energy and H plus ions are very acidic so they build up and cause the increase in acidity. This OBLA graph shows how quickly lactic acid levels build up to 4 millimoles and if this is very low performance will decrease quickly. Recovery from this is much longer than a lactic as this takes 1 to 2 hours and it requires oxygen to make up for the oxygen the body wasn't getting during anaerobic exercise. The oxygen deficit is fairly small as you need a little bit more than you are using and the epoch size is moderate as you are using a lact lactic and lactacid recovery. Me metabolic demands are glycogen and fat as both of these stores are used. As you can see from the graph, a, la a lactic recovery is the quick bit, the quick part and at the start and lactacid recovery is the slow long part of recovery. During recovery lactic acid converts to 10% protein, 20% glycogen and 70% is oxidized. Methods to help recovery could be a cool down which, which may consist of a slow jog followed by a stretch consisting of static stretches held for about 30 seconds each. Finally, on myoglobin and hemoglobin association curves, both of these curves shift right. At submax exercise, like a marathon, the, the aerobic system is used mainly and glycogen, fat and potentially protein are used as energy sources. Waste products will consist of carbon dioxide and water. During this exercise, all glycogen stores will be used and so fat stores will be used and if that if these run out then protein will also be used. Also the respiratory exchange rate 
will be below one as you are receiving more oxygen than needed and you are using more oxygen than you are producing carbon dioxide. Aerobic respiration will create waste products of water and carbon dioxide. Neuromuscular responses are that calcium ions are depleted and the and nerve impulse will be quicker and then decrease over time. Also, cholinesterase will be depleted which causes neuromuscular blockage. And finally, ACH will be depleted as you have used up most of it. This will decrease performance massively as reactions may be slower and you cannot produce energy as easily, etc. Fatigue can be reduced by glycogen loading, which is a scientific process which takes place over months or weeks before an event. This is also known as carb loading. Recovery from this is a long process and can take days or even weeks. Oxygen deficit from this is very low as you are working at steady state exercise. However, epoch size is very long and slow. As you can see, there is a short alac alactic recovery stage, but the majority of recovery is lactacid. Glycogen and fat stores are the main metabolic demands here. Finally, to help recovery, you must stretch your muscles daily and ice baths also help decrease recovery time.